something. Hi everyone and welcome back to the PTS Trade Blog. We are excited to have Constanza Dennis here with us and James Lee. Um, but first I'm going to hand over to Suzanne Ray, our Managing Director, to hear the news. Over to you Suzanne. Thanks Isabel. We'll try and be quick today. As you know, every time we do a vlog, we give a quick summary of everything the PTS and Stampex has been doing. And um, we're about four weeks into the last update. And in that time, it's most full steam ahead on our Stampex planning. We're now less than three months to go until the show, um, where you can expect to see some very familiar faces with lots of new faces. A number of societies have already booked in and we have some really exciting concepts to be sharing with you over the next few weeks. We do still have some stands available um, and some advertising space available. If anybody is still interested in that, let us know or visit the pts.net forward slash book a stand. And of course, if you'd like to come as a visitor, you can book your tickets in advance at stampexinternational.com forward slash tickets. We've been receiving a lot of new membership applications over the last few weeks and we're processing those as quickly as we can within the context of our strict vetting process. If you'd like to apply to the PTS, you can look at all of the benefits that we have um, at the pts.net forward slash benefits where the application form is also available on that site. Our members through the strength of their own brands um, and their membership fees, of course, help the PTS and Stampex do what it does, which is to promote our members, support the trade and boost the hobby. We've had a lot of engagement with members over the last few weeks. In fact, I think today we recognise that we've been in contact individually with 130 members alone in the last uh, 60 days. We've had members present at CAPEX 2022, which looks like it was a fantastic show, Felix in Paris and also Stafford. So it's been great to see some familiar faces at those events. We've also hosted um, another one of our how-to sessions. These are sessions especially for our members and they help guide um, our members through some of the key technologies and opportunities available to boost their businesses. We actually have three more of those already scheduled for the next few months, um, which um, include a guide to Canva and graphic design, LinkedIn for business, and some advice on how to market your own presence at stamp fairs, which is particularly of use if you're going to be doing Stampex later this year. If you're not a PTS member yet, do sign up, apply, and you'll be able to join those sessions with us. We've taken some trips recently to the Royal Philatelic Society of London and also to Stanley Gibbons. Do check out our reels on Instagram for an insight into those trips. And a special shout out to our members on eBay and our new members who are also uh, selling on eBay. We now have over 270,000 PTS shields on the platform. So you can shop with, a, with the knowledge that you're buying safe from a PTS member. So do look for the shield and look for the shield on eBay. Now let's chat up a chat with James and Constance. Um, before I finish, just a reminder to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube at the PTS and Stampex to stay up to date with our latest news. Thank you. Amazing. Gosh, Suzanne, we've had been very busy. <laughs> um, so whilst we have both James and Constanza here, I thought it would, or Suzanne and I thought it would be a good idea just to find out a little bit more about the PTS itself. Um, if you didn't know, James and Constanza are both on council. Um, James, do you want to just share with us a little bit about the council, what your role is, um, importance um, to the trade? Well, I guess uh, council is really, you know, obviously we're representing um, traders, uh, dealers, buyers and sellers of, of stamps. And um, it, it's really just trying to uh, negotiate where, where it's going, the you know, direction where people are going to be getting their stamps from and where collectors are going to be able to find stamps and and, and really just to try and um, protect uh, and future proof the, the our members and, and make them uh, keep them up to date with 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 trying to sort of keep the hobby going. Um, and, and that's why I think it's so sort of important for, for uh, you know, uh, younger people to kind of try and take a little bit of um, ownership on, on that sometimes. And, you know, that's why I got sort of a little bit uh, wrangled into being on the council just because sometimes I think you need sort of 
younger people's ideas and a bit of energy just to come come up with you know alternative options because you know it's very easy to do the same thing year on year out and and um you know take the opinion that if it isn't broke don't worry about trying to fix it but then you know if we're in a trade which you know the hobby generally you know there's going to be fewer people doing it uh moving forward or certainly in in more established countries there are maybe the growth is in other areas but um you've got to sort of try and navigate that and make sure there is still something that you know people can kind of get their teeth into because it's such a fascinating hobby and, and, and subject to be involved in and constanza what do you what's your i mean you've just recently joined council why, why did you choose to join um i think for me it's a couple of things i think it's um having worked in the auction house and seen dealt with people who have perhaps had a bad experience with the handful of perhaps bad dealers and things like that i think it's the thing that really appealed to me because i can't stand that obviously and the pts is obviously a place that people they see that sure they know it's a legitimate place they know it's someone they can trust which is in stamps it's such a big deal it's not like you know we're selling vases that's one vase it's very hard to steal things like stamps there are very little old ladies and stamp collections it's very easy for somewhat a bad person to take advantage of that so i think a lot of it for me is trying to you know protect the integrity of stamps and let people know who the good guys are and who they can trust and then i guess also it's just the fact that, you know obviously stamps there's a big bridge to cross there's a lot of older collectors and not so many young ones to try and you know appeal and think of new ways we can all brainstorm and get new ways to um attract the young people <laughs> yeah that's certainly i guess we also um on the pts council from my experience of being on that for maybe the last three four years um is that we have a lot of younger members as well and that is also reflective of a uh, trend in younger collectors also joining the hobby um, and more diverse members. So we do have seen a huge growth in the number of member applications coming from online only stamp mm. deals, which is something that we, we certainly wouldn't have so, seen, you know, 20, 30 years ago when some of the PTS council members um, joined the PTS themselves. Um, and, you know, it's really important that we do have IT savvy, social media savvy, um, you know, that diversity on the council to reflect the, the change in the trade itself. I also would be interested to hear, because all three of you are PTS members, so it would be interesting to hear um, the benefits to your, to your, that you perceive for your business, like as being a member yourself rather than just being on council. I think um, when you're, you know, a lot of people when they, when they join or when they, when they decide to become a member of, of, of the PTS, they a lot of the time they're looking at it because they want to be at Stampex. You know, it was synonymous, the two brands are hand in hand that, you know, if you want to go and do Stampex, which is the big sort of, you know, show, national show in this country, you know, um, then you, you'd be a PTS member. But I think more, more, uh, more so over the, 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 the past sort of five or 10 years, you, you find that not every dealer wants uh, to, to, to do stamp X because, you know, that a lot of them are getting older and it's a difficult logistical class, but they still want to be members because they still associate, you know, the, 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 the brand of, of, of being a, 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 you know, a PTS member that it does kind of give their customers a bit of um, uh, confidence in, in the, the, the person they're dealing with will you know deal with them fairly will um you know we'll look after them and, and and we'll have a bit of integrity i mean the core of it all the dealers are out there to to try and you know run a business and sell something and make a profit out of it but you know you don't have to do that at the expense of, of looking after your your customers and i think that pts members um are the, the ones that that we've all kind of hopefully encountered um you know the ones who've been doing it for 30 40 years already that they, they 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 all buy into the same thing that you know we are running businesses but it's a it's, it's a customer led um you know business and we we want to look after them because you know you want them to be with you for you know 20 30 40 years time and um yeah and for 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 us um for for for, for, for my business with, with with john that you know we 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 really rely on those long-term relationships and being a member of the PTS is, is kind of a key part of that. I think for us, a big thing actually is for the people who, um, some of our, we sell on behalf of people. So a lot of our collections come from people who've inherited material, things like that. And people can go on the PTS website 
which is an independent body and see that Grover is a reputable name because people get very overwhelmed when they inherit stamp collections and things like that um, in that kind of way and they don't really know where to go and then they find the PTS website which is obviously a legitimate you know um, kind of not really review but you know like people they go on there and they can see that this is a list of trustworthy businesses so then they have trust in Grover because they've come via that platform so I think that's a big one for us is the the people often come to us and say I find you on the PTS website I can see that you're a legitimate auction house and it refers people to us basically. That's yeah. great and, and there is actually a function on this directory um, which um, allows people to put reviews and yeah. recommendations so we're starting to see that a lot and that's um, you know collectors or people who've engaged with our members you know actually actively proactively putting those reviews onto the site so again there is a an element of complete in, independence there as well from 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 the collectors um i mean for me i think you know as a a new dealer joining the pts i find the community of the pts membership itself and um, one of the biggest benefits um you know the mentoring and the support that you get from fellow members not to mention the fact that you know, when you've got some stock you, you need to get rid of or you're looking for something in particular, you can you look within that safe place, that community of PTS members to, to do business as well. Um, and, you know, to be proud of showing the shield, um, you know, to, to have that for my clients, to be on that online directory, to have the shield on, on eBay and to know that that shield represents not just trust, but a society that is innovating and doing crazy exciting things like virtual stamp X and PTS awards and, and, and great initiatives like that. And then, and then something that we're certainly hearing a lot more of nowadays, you know, it's this membership is not very much per month, but it is giving back in a way to the hobby. So all of our members are committed to a strong trade and also, um, you know, a, a thriving hobby and, all of our membership fees go into, um, you know, making sure the PTS and StampX can deliver on those initiatives. And so there's, there's certainly that as well, which is a benefit to, to being a member. Gosh, so many benefits. <laughs> should we move on from chatting about the PTS? I know that we um, love to chat about the PTS, but should we, as we've got James and Constanza here, should we crack on with chatting to, to them? Um, I think for me, what's really exciting is you're both really young, which is um, and within the hobby, that's like, you know, quite a standout thing. But James, let's have a chat with you. So you're you obviously work at John Curtin LTD and um, you are very much part of the family, aren't you? And that's a family business. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got into it, like how the business works, that kind of thing? Um, yeah, so uh, I um, I met. Uh, John's daughter, um, probably what, nearly 20 years ago now, uh, we were working on a television show together. I used to work in television production. And um, then around 2008, I didn't have a, a new sort of contract to move on to. And um, yeah, her dad said, well, do you want to come help me out at a stamp show? And, um, you know, for a little bit of a uh, little bit of cash in hand on a Saturday, I uh, went along and um, sort of hung out at a stamp show. And I, I sort of realised that you know, um, I did that a few times and, and, I, and I thought, well, I didn't start off from the background of being a collector, but I looked at it and I just I found myself fascinated that people were spending small or large amounts of money on these little bits of paper. And uh, and I realized that, you know, when you're talking to these people and I, I'm, I'm quite, you know, I'm, I'm quite a chatty person. I, I like to engage and, and, you know, anyone in all walks of life a lot of them were 60 to 90 years old but you know they're, they're fascinated by these little bits of paper because they tell a story and um and not everyone wants to you know every time they sit down they want to read a whole novel but you know they 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 buy these little bits of paper because they they they're evocative and they speak to them and they they, they tell stories and um and they were willing to part with you know their, their money to, to to hear those or to find more 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 about them and um yeah so i thought looking around me uh 15 years ago that there there weren't lots of other people sort of doing the same thing and i came from a kind of industry where there were lots of other people who would do the same thing as you for, for less money and so you sort of uh, thought to yourself well maybe there's maybe there's some legs in this and um over the years you just you 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 know as if you've got a fairly good visual memory you, and you you kind of you learn from your mistakes then then you can kind of you know you you can make this sort of 
into a business and 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 one that you can really enjoy and get a lot out of a lot of satisfaction out of it um because you know there is something new every day you know you never know what's going to sort of come along on, on your desk and um and you've always got sort of choices to make when something's put in front of you you decide whether you think it's worth x y z and um and you never write every time but the more choices you make the more times you you get it wrong you know the the more cued in you get to to knowing really what 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 things are worth and what what most importantly what you're able to ask people to to, to pay for them uh, you know what what is a fair and reasonable amount and so yeah you just uh, really just by plugging away and doing doing it every day for the last sort of 15 years i've just about know what i'm doing now and um yeah and it's and and i, I couldn't really do anything else um not I'm, I'm not completely unemployable but i you know because i i I do enjoy it, and I don't think um, you can once you've once you've done this sort of thing for yourself. You you don't really um, you, you couldn't really pitch yourself doing anything else. But um, yeah, so that's um, oh, I'm now married, John's daughter, and we've got a family and you know, three kids, and uh, yeah, um, and, and 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 stamps is um, yeah an integral sort of part of that. Yeah, and do you think that your kids will become stamp collectors? Uh, I don't know. Um, I um I bought one of those um those stamps the other day the the ones Ukraine issued with the um, the soldier sort of swearing at the um at the uh at the battleship um and and I was telling my kids the story about why they produced this stamp and stuff and and yeah they they're really interested but you know obviously the most interesting part with them uh, was it was you know them seeing this this guy swearing at a, a, a battleship <laughs> thinking that uh, yeah um and, and but who knows whether they like them or not I think they'll they'll by osmosis they'll get a bit of an appreciation of of, of them and, and then also they'll be fascinated as to the same reason that, that i was that you know why people spend such amounts of money on, on on things that are intrinsically just just bits of paper um and and yeah maybe they'll collect maybe, maybe they won't but um you know if they have got any sort of um inquisitive nature they'll they'll like the stories that that stamps tell and uh you know, uh, and that's I think why why most people kind of collect and get in, into yeah. the hobby. You know, yeah. And as um, John Curtin, the the business obviously that you tend to go to a lot of UK uh, shows, don't you? What's what's the what's the land like at the moment in terms of UK shows? Have you seen a lot of people there? Which ones have you been to? Um, we do. I don't. We used to do. We used to do about forty shows uh, a year, and um, it's probably down to about just under 30 now but I mean part of that is that you know John always did the the, the one day shows uh and, and I kind of join in um on on the on the two day ones and, and once a month we have one in in London as well we, we'd regularly do um <laughs> but generally you know you can't deny that there, there are fewer people turning up to these things um you know that that that's just the the way the world is post kind of COVID and um I think a lot of collectors you know, they they did a lot of their collecting that they wanted to do during COVID and they were able to buy a lot online and they sat at home and they got it delivered to them. And, and there's a bit of a hangover from that, that, you know, because we were able to sell quite a lot during that period that um, there aren't so many gaps in their collections now they want to fill. So they're not traveling out to do it. Um, it so, you know, it shows, shows work for us because we try and stay a little bit ahead of the curb in terms of who, what are we selling? What are we selling, and, and and who are we targeting to sell it to? So, you know, if we go to a show somewhere in the Midlands, somewhere a couple of hours away, we we know half a dozen deals that we're going to do before we turn up there, and hopefully that that sort of covers the costs of of the show and makes a little bit. And then anything on top of that, you know, is is a bit of a bonus. But um, yeah, you never really can predict these things. But I mean, it's working okay. But we, it's just time will tell, really, as to if people will carry on going buying from us in that that fashion interesting so you still think that shows are going to be something that you'll do for the next few years you just might keep reducing them as yeah no I, I'm, I'm confident that, that that shows will always be there and there'll always be a um a, a place for, for for stamp shows to exist because you know people want to be able to see things that they buy you know and they want to be able to you want to be able to meet the people they buy it from you know the problem with online buying and selling as, as, as we all do with you know things like amazon and stuff is it, it it is sort of it is faceless and you know and it's okay if you're going to buy um 
you know, something from an Argos catalog that's got a barcode number next to it that, you know, that is, can be duplicated a thousand times. You know, it's always going to be the same. And if it comes broken, you've got, got a bag ready to send it back in. But if you want something that's a little bit more tailored and something that, you know, uh, you're, you know, uh, you're, 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 you're spending a, a money on that, you know, you want a bit of confidence that, that, that you're getting the right thing. And uh, I think there's no better way of doing that than, than face to face with a dealer and uh, uh, who, who you, you trust and who is looking after you. But um, yeah, I mean, the, the dealer will be making money out of what they sell you, but they also offer you that, that kind of, you know, that, that guarantee that, you know, that, that they're hopefully that they're, 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 they're being fair and, and, and honest with it. Yeah. Constance, what's your, what's your take on this? Where, what shows do you go to? Have you, because you do quite a few shows as well, don't you? We do some. I mean, I tend to go do more going to shows because we haven't got a massive team at Grosvenor. So particularly for like the international shows, if you attend an international show fully, it takes a lot of people out of the office. Yeah. For example, Capex I was at, um, but we didn't take a stand just because it was the week before our auction and we just didn't have enough staff. You know, we can't be doing that just before an auction having, you know, half the team out of the office. So we do, in the UK, always do stand and always do York. They're the two big... Um, main shows and we do you know a few of the international ones um i'd say that quite similar to james i mean it's it's at the minute it's hard to judge because it is they're not like capex was good a lot of the dealers seem to be happy ish i think the problem with canada was they're quite far behind on the restrictions compared to us and i think a lot of the americans didn't turn up so i think we're still a little bit too soon to perhaps be judging the full effects of covid and like james says people were buying a lot online during the pandemic and I don't think we're quite far enough out of it to make a proper, I guess, judgment about shows. Um, shows for us are quite different because we don't, when a dealer goes, they can obviously see how much money they've taken and they can go, well, that's made a profit for me. Whereas auction houses, you never quite know um, if you got a certain collection because you were at Stanbex or if you got would have got it anyway. I mean, obviously part of the thing is um, there's a lot of competition to get material from auction houses and a lot of Stanbex is actually just us talking to people and, letting everyone know that we're nice and we're friendly and we're approachable so but again it's not quite the same when you're not when we're dealing because we haven't got that that necessarily that strong financial feedback because we just we just talk to people and promote ourselves as opposed to you know necessarily selling them stamps so um but yeah i think i think they're okay at the minute but again i think it's just a little bit too soon to perhaps judge yeah what the future will be for them yeah at london 2022 sorry i'm going back like quite a few months here um but you did a you had two stands didn't you you did a full auction preview where you took um like scheduled meetings am I right in thinking that all people could go and during a few days yeah, I mean, so how did that come about um well basically we have a, we had a normal stand which is where we we're doing our usual yeah. then upstairs um Trevor Payton was selling some material virus so we sort of took over part of his stand because he was wasn't sure if he was going to be able to attend or not and then he kind of it evolved into a viewing stand, which we've never done before at a show. Um, again, viewing at a show is difficult because we have a range of lots. So we have everything from single stamps to boxes, lots in 10 boxes. And obviously we can't bring all the 250 boxes to stamp X. So it is a little bit difficult to have the lots in kind of two places because then when it goes to our office, can't look at the small lots. And then what stamp it, got to look at big lots. So it was quite well received, but um, I think the jury's out whether we'll do it again because it's a lot of, a lot of extra, again, a lot of extra staffing and a lot of extra work, but then a lot of people were very happy that they could be some lots just, you know, and then we were bringing over special request lots as well. If somebody had like one album, they really wanted to bring it up. So um, we'll see for the next Stampex. Yeah. Got to persuade really? Tom, he was less, a little bit less. But, <laughs> but really. Yes, got of those. That, that was that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> probably I mean whoever has to move the boxes worst job um but really good idea and I think for the show like something I I, I just um I brought it up because lots of people had mentioned it to me and lots of people were talking about it at the time so obviously you made a you know good it was a really great thing to do what a great idea just you know something you know, different I think we might do it again in the future I know some some auction houses do just bring bits up so we might might be again because again our stand downstairs isn't really big enough to have proper viewing so perhaps we'll might be watch this space basically yeah yeah <laughs> and Constance just tell us a little bit about what you do at Grosner and how you um got into the role and because I think I was saying this earlier but I probably like I think you're one of the youngest 
MDs, our youngest female MDs, and that really, you know, that's really exciting, isn't it? Like for the for the philately, and I think it's exciting for philately. I mean, I think that it's it's brilliant, you know, to get different um, different people on board and and that kind of thing. I'd love to hear like how you came into the role, how you came into philately itself. Um, I had a bit of a weird um, route into stamps. I um, first got interested in stamps. I was about 14, 15. And I was, apart from stamps, I do love my clothes. And I was in a charity shop. Um, I just happened to see a pack of stamps. And the top stamp was this, like, r complete rubbish uh, stamp. But it was like a Cambodian set stamp with a little tea set on. And I just happened to buy this packet of stamps thinking, oh, they look cool. And then that's how I sort of got into stamps. I um, never thought it would be my job. I um, was always physics mad. I went off to uni to do physics and then in my first year I got cancer, I had to drop out. And then when I got better, I didn't really like my uni. So I ended up just getting a job in stamps. And I, my first proper job was at Sandifer, which is a, like a smaller auction house um, up north. And then they made some redundancies, unfortunately. I was one of the ones that went and I um, was lucky. I got a few job offers for different stamp roles. Um, I chose Grobenick because it was obviously a very well-known um, company, got a very good reputation. So. I kind of came here and then I looked at lots and lots of stamps and then I'm also quite bossy I guess so the combination of the confidence and the stamps kind of came together and now I'm the MD. <laughs> Amazing that's brilliant. I love I mean, yeah, my day -day I do I do quite a big picture of stuff I mean I I do still this is the problem now is that now I'm not the more managerial I've, I spend a little bit less time on stamps which I do kind of like miss a bit so I am still doing quite a lot of describing but I do a lot of going to look at collections, doing evaluations again, like going to shows abroad, I auctioneer. So it's a really big mix of lots of things, my job, basically. God, what's, your favorite, what's your favourite part of the job? It is still stamps. I mean, <laughs> I do love people, I love chatting, but I'm never happy that when I'm at home with the stamps, with the cats, just all sitting together, like looking at the stamps. So um, I must, that is still, I just, I just love stamps. I mean, I get paid to do my hobby. I mean, I still, I'm sure a lot of people who work in stamps would agree this, but I can't quite believe every day I wake up and somebody pays me to look at stamps. It's quite absurd. That is so, so cool. I absolutely love that. I absolutely love as well that you got into stamp collecting because you're into fashion and you just happen to, I love that story. That's amazing that you found some stamps in a charity shop. Amazing. Mm. What a great story. Um, so I suppose, um, has, has there ever got any tips, either of you got any tips about people, how if you, um, want to get into the hobby and work in the hobby, how you'd go about it for anyone out there who's venturing into philately? Um, I would say for, I think just be passionate and learn as much as you can. And I mean, that's what I do for my first job. They could see that while I didn't know much, I was certainly very excited about stamps. And I would say being a female um, entering it, you have to be quite thick skinned and not get too bogged down. Cause when it, when I first started in stamps, it's okay now because everybody knows who I am and I get very little people being funny with because I'm female. But when I first started, it was a long slog. of I was the wife of whoever was there, you know, all this. Nothing particularly, not a lot of really nasty stuff, but just a lot of quite tiresome comments because it is, again, it's a generational difference. And that took a good couple of years of having to have quite thick skin of going, okay, I'm here because I like stamps. I keep turning up because I like stamps, not because I'm like following some random man down the street so um I think just if you want if you're a particularly female wanting to enter stamps you do need to sort of brush off a lot of the comments like that that will I think will do fade away once people realize oh actually she really actually does like philately um but I think yeah just again like just the enthusiasm I mean there's no real qualifications to work in stamps I mean it's one of those things it's almost like an apprenticeship where you learn on the job so I think it's just if it's thing you're passionate about um go for it yeah, I think I'd echo what uh, Constanza is saying. You know, I think obviously, you know, she's um, everyone who, who knows Constanza in the industry, sort of, she's uh, you know, a breath of fresh air because you, you get lots of lots of the same sort of looking, um, you know, uh, men who've got similar sort of hairlines and similar sort of ages. And uh, and so when there's sort of young, fresh faced uh, people around it, you know, they do stand out and um you know, for years, you know, I, I get it as well. And I think if you're a young person who wants to uh, um, get into to, to doing more in, in stamps, it's um, try not to be afraid or intimidated by all that mm. sort of side of it, because, you know, no one really, um, there's no real 
bad eggs in it. I mean, they're, they're, everyone's a little bit on the spectrum, really. They're all, they're all a little bit strange, but no one's no one's means any harm with it. You know, they're all very friendly. And they just, you think of a lot of people when they first think of sort of stamp collectors, they think it's a very lonely sort of hobby with just one person sitting in a room looking at a book, looking at stamps. And uh, and it's not, you know, it's, it's people who want to share their hobby. They want to talk about these things. They want to share stories. And uh, I think if you're starting out doing this, um, find find things that um, that that speak to you and and you know find stories that you find interesting and um and and just um put as many different things in front of your eyes as possible and if, if you're a collector uh you don't start uh you know 20 years of collecting you know you don't end up um, doing the same thing 20 years on as you did on day one but you have to start on day one doing something so whether you're buying you know first day covers or whether you're buying presentation packs or whether you're buying GB or, or, or any other country, you know, uh, start somewhere and just just try and learn by by doing. And um, and then if you want to sort of trade in it again, you just have to put as many different things in front of you as, as possible. And, and don't be afraid to kind of make mistakes, because if you've never had something before, you might as well buy it and see whether you, you know, whether you whether you your instinct said it was good. So it's good. Or if your instinct said it was good and it turned out not to be so good, then you learn a lot more by making mistakes than you do by, you know, buying something for 50 P and selling it for 50 pounds. Um, but um, yeah, just, just, just uh, absorb every, every bit of information that comes your way. I think. Yeah. I mean, I had that guess, like I did when I was a teenager, I had a little bit, the most pathetic ever, like eBay buying and selling when I was like 16, 17, 18, that made just enough money to, to pay for my own, kind of collecting hobbies and that sort of gave me I guess again I still didn't necessarily think it's gonna be my job but it gave me that little flavor of what it's like to say so, I mean things like eBay they are a great way to sort of trial having a go at whether buy whether you just like collecting whether you actually enjoy the buying and selling element of stuff because it is nice when you find things that someone's been looking for for 20 years they their little eyes light up I mean it can be very rewarding in that regard and I guess it's also very nice that when you're working in stamps pretty much everyone that works in stamps is because they love stamps it's not like at any other kind of career path where lawyers a lot of them aren't lawyers because they're passionate about law. They want a load of money. Whereas stamps, it's full of people that it's not a career career choice. It's that we're all here because we love stamps. It's a very nice industry to be in because I mean we'll always you know people forever sending us the pictures of have you seen this before? Do you know what this is? It's a very I think welcoming and warm industry because we're all just so enthusiastic about it. Yeah, and no, I had we had an interesting conversation the other day about stamp forums and how those can be quite a scary place if someone's starting off and wanting to ask for advice which is personally why I think you know being a member of the PTS is a great thing because I can just ask within the PTS member group a question and know that it's a safe place to ask questions but you know we were talking in the last vlog about Twitter being a fantastic place to ask questions as well if you have got something across your desk and you want to find out a little bit more about it you know Again, generally, not just the trade, but the collectors, obviously, we, everyone's passionate about the hobby and wants to help each other out. So it is, it is a, 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 I think your use of the word apprenticeship is, is bang on, um, Constance. And James, you mentioned earlier, you know, if you've got a good visual memory, and I think that's the other thing, if that's a skill set or a, or a personality trait that you have, that you just kind of can remember images and, and in your head, remember stories and, and valuations and things, then that can definitely make you, make things speed up if you're if you're hitting hitting the trade. And just um, I know if you are um, wanting to find out some more stories in the PTS handbook, which is available on the PTS website, we have had a double page spread for the last three handbooks, I think, about um, our members who are under forty. So again, there's some really nice stories and some new people that you can that you can maybe reach out to if you are interested in joining the trade. Yeah, that's a that is a really good highlight actually. Um, I think that feature we tend to do that every every year, and what we actually do is um, ask people who they think is like a rising star in the hobby. So if we if you don't see them featured, then please do also let us know um, or highlight them to us because it's always good for us to meet them as well. Um, so I just, I suppose we just wanted to briefly, Susanna, do you have any questions? I was just going to touch on trends. Um, no, just, I guess at one stage we just want to hear if James has got any good stock or offers at the moment and if uh, <laughs> Stans has, you know, just an update on the upcoming auction as well. I was just literally going to ask about, uh, about trends, but James, do you want to tell us about offers? Um, anything? Well, I mean, we always just sort of carry um, 
a, a range of, of mainly we 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 kind of good for for going a range of collections. Um, you know, anything from fifty pounds to uh, you know. 10, 20, 30,000 pounds. It depends on what sort of lot it is. Um, but um, we try and just, you know, I, I think we, we we just try and ca carry a range of stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, and a lot of what we sell, really a lot of what we sell ends up going to to other dealers or goes to, to eBay people. Cause we don't, it's only sort of myself and John, a couple of other people who do bits of work for us. So we don't tend to work too hard on lots. We tend to just worry more about going out, finding it, buying it at the right sort of price and putting a margin on. So, you know, it's always worth if anyone has any specific sort of things that they're looking for, or, I mean, you know, don't come and ask me for sort of um, uh, postal history collections from Timbuktu to Mongolia, because, you know, we won't have that, but, you know, uh, general collections of, uh, of the world or bits for someone, good starter collections for people to, to get into, um, then, you know, we, we, we tend to have a lot of lot of bases kind of covered. So it's always worthwhile getting in touch and and uh, letting us know, you know, anything that you, you might be looking for, because, you know, we 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 tend to try and buy a little bit of everything. And so that means we're never exactly sure what's going to crop up next. Make sure that if you have got a want list that it's with uh, John Curtin Limited. <laughs> so if it does come across the desk, then then you'll be that they call. Um, and you're going to be at Stampex, aren't you? You've got quite a big area at Stampex on the yep. main, um, so you'll have lots of, of good stuff for people to look through at the show. Exactly well. Great. And sorry, const I, I was just going to ask about trends. Uh, James, any trends that you're seeing coming up? I keep mentioning trends now. I feel like I'm trends. Um, I think, again, you know, people are looking for what you're finding is that the same way that, that dealers have always been um collectors are getting there as well that you know if you haven't seen something if, if something's new to the market um and it's been you know tucked away for a long time um then it tends to fetch sort of you know crazy levels above what you think it should be worth um so you know the general rule is you know if if you've not seen it you know, the last 20 or 30 years, then you've got to try and buy it. The problem with that as a trend is that there's never enough of that sort of thing to go around. Um, that's why stamps as a whole are not really something you can kind of say is a, a wonderful investment because there are things that do go up in value, but the nature of them is they're, they're, they're kind of the, the few, whereas the, the many that are out there, you know, uh, there are, there's, 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 there's a lot of those. So, um, yeah, I think people need to just... Um, buy things that, that they genuinely find interesting, buy, buy things that, you know, we don't have, I, I go to so many people's houses where they've collected for 40 years and they accumulate loads and hundreds of thousands of stamps in, in tens of, you know, hundreds of albums. And, um, and they never really focus on any particular area. And, um, and unfortunately that, that kind of thing, you know, is, is really as, as a collectors go, you know, those collectors are kind of dying out and, um, you know, more, more so people are becoming, very specific about the things they want to buy and the things they want to have. Um, so, you know, find the things that, uh, that, that, that speak to you and, and that, you know, if somebody comes around to your house, you know, I, I will show my kids the, these stamps from Ukraine of the, that tell a story and, and they'll then tell their friends. And if someone comes around to my house, I'll show them that sort of thing. But if you show them, a you know, um, 20 albums of, 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 general material first it comes if it doesn't tell an interesting story you've, you've kind of lost people already so yeah find the, the few things that that, that that speak to you I think um and Constance any um trends in the auction world and then you can give us an overview of what's happening in terms of auctions I think you've just had one so you could tell us when the next one is yeah, we have just had one. I mean in terms of trends I was actually following one for what uh, James was saying I definitely say that things like postal history are very very buoyant because it's when it's a stamp, it's just a stamp, but when a stamp's in an envelope, there's a lot more dynamic to that. There's, you can be studying so many more things other than just the stamp. You can be looking at the rate of postage, the destinations, the transits, things like, I mean, the thing I'm interested in, things like I'm interested in airplane crashes. So there's just so much more on, that can be on a cover. So there's definitely postal history is a very strong part of the market. And then the more weirdy stuff as well, things like revenues that 20, 30 years ago weren't taken particularly, so Cinderella's that weren't taken particularly seriously 20, 30 years ago and now, a really exciting area people want to collect them because they are things a bit different a bit quirky there's more you can get more from them 
Um, I mean, in terms of growing, we did just, we had an auction last week that went um, really well. We had some really nice ascensions and nice planner in that, um, so that was a good sale. And then this autumn, um, it's quite exciting actually because it's our 25th year of trading, um, oh. and it's also our 150th auction as well. So we're going to make a bit of a bit of a fuss about that in the autumn. And um, we've got next sale is going to be October, and there's some nice bits in there. We've got the Stephen Heights collection of Barbados, which has got some post history in there as well, and then. Um, We've got some more Falkland lines, which is always an interesting area because obviously the Falkland lines has a very interesting history. So um, there's some cool stuff in there. But yeah, definitely, I think people are just looking for things that, as James says, a little bit more quirky and a bit more interesting. Amazing. That sounds amazing. Um, thank you so much both for your for your time. I don't have any other questions. Oh, does everyone want to tell your as uh, your um, websites so that everyone knows where to go? Grovesner. Grovesneroctions.com. Uh, www.jcstamps.co.uk um, drop us an email give us a call <laughs> you've got an app as well don't you for stamps we do but that's just for live bidding so that's for on auction day our app is for if you want to spend some money really easily <laughs> <get the app>. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant thank you so so much that's, that was great really great to chat to you Suzanne, have you got any other questions? Sorry, I normally ask. No, I'm good. That was a great session. Thank you so much, guys. And thanks to everybody who's been watching.